Hello everyone, I am Dennis St. Martin. I'm one of the founders of Pompeii Warrior Foundation and I am here with uh, Dr. Johnson. He is the Director of Pediatric Heart Failure and Transplants here at the Mayo Clinic and he is also Leo St. Martin, my son's um, heart doctor here at the Mayo Clinic. Um, Dr. Johnson, first thank you for taking time to uh, do this interview with us and also thank you for being a part of Leo's team of course. and uh, helping us with his disease and his further treatments. Um, I have a few questions for you Absolutely. regarding what we've done here. Yeah. Um, one, can you describe the state of Leo's heart when he was first diagnosed? Yeah. So Leo, um, when he was first diagnosed, um, someone performed an echocardiogram and could show the, the severe increased uh, wall thickness of his ventricle. And you can see it on this picture right here. I don't know. If, um, yeah. Let me take a look here. We'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Yeah. So you can see this is his left ventricle here. You can see the incredible increased thickness of the walls here. Kind of a speckly pattern as well within the muscle that is pretty typical of someone we see with, with uh, Pompe's disease. Um, you can tell it was very thick um, and actually this even looks a little bit better than the very first echo he had where his heart wasn't even functioning very well. Um, this is the, the first one that he had had uh, after getting out of the hospital uh, during that first admission. So if you can imagine it looked even worse than this when yeah. he was first diagnosed. Yeah. And his uh, injection fracture when we first diagnosed was under 20. Which so is, I mean, he was very—it's a very sick heart. Yeah, he yeah. was—he was in complete heart failure. Um, can you describe uh, Leo's heart now? Yeah, absolutely. So this is an echo that we just performed on Leo last week. Um, you can see here; these are his four chambers: right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. So this left ventricle right here is the same ventricle that was in this picture right here, and you can hardly tell. That it's even exists. That's even the same same person. Um, the you can see the walls here. Um, right in this lateral wall, there may be some very slight increased little uh, pits and trabeculations, which we actually see sometimes in normal population. But the rest of the wall of the ventricle looks completely normal, and you could you could fool a cardiologist into not realizing this was Pompey's with this picture. And uh, you said to us last time that we spoke that uh, you would have no problem with uh, a child like this being active, playing sports yeah. or anything like this. Absolutely, yeah. We we often see patients with this very slight uh, trabeculated pattern and we wonder what's the best path forward with them, but as long as they're doing well, growing, um, uh, gaining weight uh, and, and active, we usually let them do anything. That's great. Um, in your experience, have you seen a transformation like this before? Yeah, I will tell you, I've, I've seen uh, multiple patients with Pompe's and Leo's is one of the more dramatic ones that I've seen. It really, uh, you, you honestly can't even tell right now that, uh, that he had Pompe's just based on his echo, whereas those first ones, it's, it's plain to anybody. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, we have done some studies and I know that we um, gave you one of the studies that we've been uh, kind of doing yeah. all of our research based around. Yeah. Um, it is called the or Successful Treatment of Severe Cardiomyopathy and Glycogen Storage Disease Type 2 with the Ketogenic Diet. Um, do you think that that could have played a role um, in helping ERT? Yeah, you know, this particular case report that um, Dennis is, is referencing uh, certainly is impressive and then shows uh, a, a case where, where clearly a ketogenic uh, diet really made a significant difference in, in this particular patient with a glycogen storage disease. Um, you know, it's really tough to know. We, we have seen improvements in, in heart function um, and wall thickness in, in Pompeii's patients with enzyme replacement therapy, and it's certainly possible that the ketogenic diet did certainly boost that, um, that improvement. It's just very tough to tell. What we really need beyond these kind of case reports is we need studies. We need um, studies where we have Pompeii's patients, we give them standard of care, and then we introduce ketogenic diet in a certain number of them, and we try to see their rate of transformation and to see if it's the better thing for them. So that leads me to my last and follow-up question. Is this something you would like to study? Uh, yes. Is, is yes. this something you feel worthiness of, of being studied yes. here at the Mayo Clinic? Yes, a thousand times yes. That's great. That's great. Well, again, thank you, Dr. Johnson, for not only uh, helping us out today, and uh, thank you for being a part of our son's yeah. team. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's an honor, thank you sir. very much. Thank you.